imagine waking up every morning to having this in your driveway. I've just had it two days and I feel better about life already. Okay, first and foremost, price and range, this Porsche Taycan GTS will set you back just north of a quarter of a million dollars. And they let me drive it. <laughs> the fools. As for that, you'll get 354 k's out of a charge, and it'll do those k's blisteringly fast, 0 to 100 in 3.2 seconds. But there's so much more to this car than just facts and figures. If you're judging it just on stats, you're doing it all wrong. Because this car heralds the death of the idea that electric vehicles can't stir the soul. I mean, look at it. How could you not be impressed by the lines, the stance, the refinement, its pure class? But it's also a four-door car with practicality that surprised me. For example, yes, the interior is sleek, but it's also spacious. And it's full of creature comforts, like heated and adjustable everything. A 14-speaker Bose sound system, four USB points throughout the car, wireless phone charging, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, touchscreen displays with haptic feedback, and more leather than that one guy from the village people. On paper, it's a luxury car, it's a performance, car, but in the real world it's also a four-door family car with cup holders throughout and plenty of room in the back seats providing your kids are under six feet tall. It has a spacious 366 litre boot big enough for golf clubs or a body and a very usable PSC of 30. It also has an 84 litre Frontfach as it's called in German, but you're not buying a Porsche Taycan for its Frontfach, you're buying it for its prestige and its performance and it has plenty of that. Boost mode will distribute 440 kilowatts to its 20-inch wheels, and its two-speed gearbox delivers 850 newton meters of torque, ensuring that whatever's in front of you soon won't be. Now, I'm no Porscheologist, but I know that this car happens to share the same platform with the Audi RS e-tron GT. And it makes me wonder, is this really a true blue Porsche, or is it a fake Porsche, an imposter? like some guy in his 40s who's still putting gel in his hair in some vain attempt to cling on to his youth. <laughs> As for tech specs, this machine has at its disposal 380 kilowatts at its four wheels, but with the flick of a switch, I can ramp it up to 440 kilowatts and 850 newton meters of torque. By going into boost mode, it unleashes 16% more power. If you were to put that power to the pavement, you would get, as you know, 0 to 100 in 3.2 seconds. If you were to go 0 to 200, you'd reach that 200 k's an hour in just 12 seconds, which is brutal. Obviously, it's limited in its top speed, 250 k's an hour maximum speed, uh, but obviously, you're never going to do that on New Zealand roads. But if you were to take it to the racetrack, for example, the drag strip, you would do a quarter mile in 11.8 seconds. And that is the same quarter mile speed as a McLaren 625C with a twin turbo V8. As for the interior, this car feels very different to the Audi RS e-tron GT, even though sure, they share a lot of the same stuff. The interior designing is completely, completely different. It's just as refined, but it feels angrier, racier, sportier, raw. That's it, it feels more raw. Maybe it's the seating position. Maybe it's, there's a little more cabin noise. There's something about it. I think it's the steering wheel height as well. The steering wheel is higher. Maybe it's these, it's these little eccentricities. It's these things, it's this, this, this clock on the dashboard, this stopwatch. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of little nuances that just make it feel angrier, more raw. It feels good though. Despite the Taycan GTS weighing in at 2.3 tonnes, largely due to its 93 kilowatt hour battery pack, its stupidly low centre of gravity made it feel like a limpet mine on the road. But there's no way to appreciate this machine stuck in the city. Really looking forward to getting on the motorway and getting out of the city. There is a, a country full of great roads waiting to be driven. And here I am stuck in Auckland? No way, no way, man. Gotta get out. I don't even have a set path right now. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just gonna spend a few hours driving around having fun. But before I could have fun, I needed to escape Auckland, of course. But what better car to do it in than this? Even though this is a Porsche, it's still a real high-tech piece of kit. Obviously, I've got all the creature comforts I could want. I've got lane-keeping assist and adaptive cruise control, which works a treat. 
I've also got merging warnings that tell me if there's a car in my blind spot. I've got a great heads up display with all the information. I've got sat nav, climate control, everything you could want. Plus, I also have all of the high tech gadgetry of the Audi and I have Porsche performance to boot. What's not to like, really? Now, unlike the Audi, this one does not have the flappy paddles on the side, which can alter the regenerative braking that puts power back into the battery. The regen braking is adjustable, however, but you have to go into a menu to do it, which I don't want to take my eyes off the road driving a quarter of a million dollar sports car. But suffice to say, you have all the options you could want, all the options that the Audi has, except, as far as I can tell, it does not have lim, speed limiter. Oh, wait, I do have a limiter. It's just not a button. Uh, it's actually there, hidden in the dashboard. Okay, so, we turn on the cruise control, active lane keeping, lane keeping assist. Okay, maximum speed 100, it's set. The cruise control is on, the auto steer is on. The car is driving itself, baby. I will never get tired of this. Although one question I have is, what happens if I let go of the steering wheel? I'm not going to let go completely, but if I just put two fingers on, will that upset it? Now you can see it is sailing around the lane a little bit. It is designed for me to have my hands on the wheel. Okay, already it's saying, please take over steering. All right, I'm not going to. I'm gonna see what else happens. Okay, now it's got a red warning, take over steering, it's beeping. Is that all? It's just gonna shut it off or what? Oh, oh, drive it. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. All right, far out. <laughs> Crikey, okay. Don't do that, it'll really wake you up. Far out, okay, sorry, my mistake car, my mistake. While I head south and recover from being attacked by the seatbelt, allow me to do a quick shout out to Ecotricity, which makes these videos possible. They're the only electricity provider in New Zealand which is Carbon Zero certified. That means every electron they offer is pure and generated right here in New Zealand from wind, hydro and solar. Not only that, it's competitively priced too, so get yourself some green cred and join the revolution at ecotricity.co.nz. And while you're there, head over over to the EV Buyer's Guide where you'll find the prices and ranges of every electric car in New Zealand right now, including this one which was finally free from the city. As for shared technology between this and its Audi cousin, yes this car does share a lot of stuff. One of the most notable things is the gearbox. It has a two-speed gearbox on the back axle. It's not normal for electric cars to have a gearbox. A reduction box, sure, but not a gearbox. But yeah, this one has a two-speed gearbox that if you listen carefully, and if you're on a really smooth, quiet road, which I'm not, you can sometimes hear the whining as it changes into its second gear, which is pretty cool. That brings me to the next point. I got out my trusty sound meter, and it turns out that this car has a reasonable amount of road noise at 100 k's an hour on New Zealand's coarse chip roads, about 77 decibels, which is not great. The thing that it doesn't really translate well on camera is the din. There is a low frequency roar coming from the road noise, maybe because this car sits so low to the ground. Now, I edited this noise out in post-production, but if I left it in there, it would sound like this. Sorry about blowing up your subwoofer there, but the cabin noise forms a key component in making this car feel raw, even if my microphone doesn't like it. Now speaking of noises, this car has driving modes and they have different attributes. So if I change the uh, knob on the steering wheel here, I'm in normal mode now. If I go from normal to sport, not only does the suspension lower a little bit, but the noise generator changes. Now if I put it into sport plus one more turn, the noise generator gets not only angrier, but the regenerative braking gets stronger, and it's instantly more responsive. The noise that comes out of it, it makes... I know it's not real. It's not an engine, but it stirs the soul. My hair sticks up on my arms. It's like watching a horror movie. You know it's not real, but you still get frightened. It's like hypnosis. The noise combined with that vicious acceleration, it is brutal. And it just, it feels great. Do you hear the gear change? Do you hear the gear change back there? <laughs> See, that's the gearbox. <laughs> 
I love this thing. But noises aside, what this vehicle excels at is tackling corners with zero effort. Watch this corner. Just effortless. It's not even breaking a sweat. Oh, I want one of these. Well, winning lotto aside, that's not going to happen anytime soon. But after driving it hard for a couple of days, I'd finally got the battery down below 50%. So I changed course and headed towards one of the many rapid chargers in New Zealand, which is a good excuse to talk about range. The official range is 354 k's per charge. But like a combustion car, your driving style plays a part. And Porsche's own online calculator shows that by entering accurate driving conditions and turning the climate control to eco mode, you can expect to get well over 400 k's per charge. But the question in my mind is how quickly does this car recharge? And the only way to find out is to plug it in. Well, I had a lot of fun driving around in the countryside, but I've got to go get some electricity. I don't really have to, but I thought I should to at least demonstrate the charging speed to see how quick it is. Now, I know it's fast, but I just don't know how fast it's going to be. Charging this vehicle is pretty straightforward. On the left hand side there is a DC charging point and here we have two hyper rapid chargers. Both of these can deliver 300 kilowatts each. Both can charge up to three electric vehicles at once. To use it, you swipe your key fob in front of the reader. It'll tell you what plug do you want. This vehicle uses CCS. You press the button, it will illuminate the plug to use, which is this one flashing blue. You walk over and you plug it in and the car does the rest. That's it. I'm kind of excited to see what speed this will charge at because the Audi e-tron GT that I had charged I think 250 kilowatts I got it charging at which is wickedly fast. This one okay here we go. So it's 53 minutes to 100% but I don't need anywhere near that. I only need another few minutes so let's give it a go. 37% state of charge at the moment charging speed we can see on the left 245 kilowatts right now I'll never get sick of seeing that okay we're plugged in let's quickly talk charging speed because we don't have much time to speak if you were to plug this thing in using one of these charge net hyper rapid chargers you'd be looking at a charge from 10% to about 80% full in around 20 minutes it's 300 kilometers or so in 20 minutes that's pretty impressive not bad I'd take that any day uh, if you were to use the home charger that comes with the car, which will either work on a regular household outlet or if you can get enough power to it and you've got three phase, then you'd be looking at regular household outlet, a couple of days to charge this car. Or if you were to use the 7 or 11 kilowatt charger, which I'd recommend doing, then you'd be looking at about 8 to 6 hours for a charge, which is pretty impressive for another 354 k's of driving. As for the warranty, this car has a 3 year warranty or 160,000 k's. However, the battery has an eight year warranty. So as for those questions, people saying, how long will the battery last in an electric car? Don't worry about it. That's just the warranty. The car's battery will continue working for years after that. The batteries now outlast the cars. So that's it. And what are we up to? We are at already at 53% charge, which is more than I need to get home. So I'm going to go and plug and that's it. In the time it took to do the spiel, it dumped another 100 Ks into the battery. This is the future, man. And as far as I'm concerned, the only thing more exciting than the future of cars right now is the acceleration of this Porsche Taycan GTS. First of all, I've got to put it into Sport Plus mode, which it's in. Okay, all right, it's in Sport Plus mode. Now, apparently for launch control, I have to put my foot on the brake, put my foot hard down. Here we go. Launch control activated, hold on tight. It is brutal. Did you hear the gear change as well? Absolutely brutal. The problem is you have to plan ahead for this sort of thing. You can't just do a launch control anywhere because you're at 100 before your brain comprehends it. I could get used to driving cars like this more often, man. I am slowly turning into supercar blondie, but the ugly male version. <laughs>
And my worthless summary is, well, of course I liked it. I mean, look at it. It is a quarter of a million dollar work of art, and I got to drive it around the New Zealand countryside. What's there not to like? Okay, sure, maybe if I had some complaints, they'd be pithy and small, like, sure, the seats are a bit hard, but it's a sports car. Or maybe the headroom in the back's a bit small, but it's a sports car besides. If you're hauling your friends around in this, they're lucky to have you. Honestly, in terms of sensation, this is my number one to beat right now. Because I've driven some cars recently that have been less than epic to drive. Some of them, if they were a spice, they would be flour. But if I had a million dollars right now, I might just buy four of these. What a machine.